Utah Night on Colonial Sports Center. Football is back at the Joe for the first time in two years. I break down the men's and women's basketball schedule, including my top five games. And is this the transfer market? Because we're buying and selling the RMU soccer team right here on CFC. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back into another wonderful evening of Colonial Sports Center. I'm Nathan Bryson, and I'm joined alongside by my partner, Colby Sher Sherwin. Colby, how are you doing tonight? we got a great show tonight. I'm doing great. Michael Deemer is going to break down the keys to win on Saturday for the football team. Ethan Morrison is going to join me to talk about the basketball schedules, and we got a lot of soccer in the show tonight. And also, Colby, we're going to take an exclusive look at last Friday's RMU Colonial Invitational for the cross-country team. But to kick off the show tonight, the women's soccer team hosted Purdue Fort Wayne. Were they able to mash the Mastodons? Early on here, the Mastodons with the ball. They're going to send it over. Ali Ball sends it towards the Colonial's net. Luckily, the ball was saved. Close one there. Get another look at it. Don't know what's going on in that play. Mastodons with the ball again. They're going to score. That's uh, ba Bailey Rotano, and that makes it 1-0 Mastodons. Another play here. Sends it towards net. Courtney Wasala, what a save. And it's 1-0 still. Another look at that for you. And this one actually is the goal. That's Courtney Wasall. She'll make it 2-1 Mastodons, or 2-0 Mastodons. Crazy game here, or crazy bounce there. But the Colonials were not going to go down fighting here. Uh, Haley Finale finally scores for the Colonials, 2-1 at the 37th minute mark. Close game here. Colonials will not back down, though. Another one sent towards the net. That's Angela Vidamia, and that makes it 2-2. Two two. And over time, if you're a Penguins fan, you know who Tristan Jari is. And another play like that for... Uh, Courtney Masala as the Macedons take it away in overtime. They're going to shoot and score. The Rotano, you've heard that name a lot. That's Morgan Rotano. 3 2. Macedons get the win in overtime here in Moon Township. While the women's soccer team couldn't capture a win at home, the men's soccer team loaded up the buses and went on to Loretto PA to take on the St. Francis Red Flash. Let's head to the tapes for this one. The Colonials 4-10 and 1 all-time against their former NEC foe. Jeff Thuman here in the second half after a lousy first half of action between the Colonials and Red Flash. Cross into the middle and there's Maximus Rigsby cleaning up the loose change for the Red Flash to, to mark the first tally of the game. Calvin Ramirez going down for the Colonials on that one there on the defensive side. Breakdown on the defensive assignments for Robert Morris. Now let's look at a key chance late in this one for Brian Okongo for the Colonials. Couldn't get it past Jonas Diesler for the, uh, for the red flash. He stood on his head all game long. One last chance. Gal Bende on the free kick. Climbing the ladder is Diesler there. Huge save. And coming in, Evan Lamarca with a header. But Diesler there. Eight saves on the day. Gives the red flash a 1-0 win. Now heading back to women's soccer. After tying their first game of Horizon League play, the Colonials were looking to pick up a win. Were they able to pounce on the Panthers? And they fell 2-0. Haley Johnson got the scoring going in the sixth minute. That would be her third on the year. The assists were from Gabby Schwartz and Kat Von Boone. Then at the 47th minute mark, Yolanda Sever netted her fifth goal of the year. Schwartz got the assist again. The Colonials put up a big fat donut as they fell 2-0 to the Panthers. Now the men's soccer team on the same page as the women's soccer team taking on Milwaukee as well. Let's see how they fared against the Panthers. The Colonials falling for the second time against Milwaukee since joining the Horizon League, losing back in April. 4-0. Colonials do get a tally on the board, and that's Tom Akinola in the 86th minute of the, the, the match. The Brampton, Ontario native with his first collegiate goal. For the Panthers, it's Paolo Gratton. Two goals at the 19th minute and the 46th minute. Colonials, Mike Zornacek in the net. Four saves for them, and this is the fourth one-goal loss for the Colonials in the young season. Now, Colby, we've been talking a lot about the men's and women's soccer team, and we're going to stay with that trend as both teams have been trying to buy some wins early in the season. Speaking of buying, we're going to head down to Wall Street where our own Owen Krebs is sitting down with some soccer analysts looking to buy or sell. Guys? Yeah, welcome to the stock market here. We're going to talk about some soccer, which has kind of been a shaky subject here on campus for the Colonials so far. A rough start and a rough season so far for both men's and women's soccer, but a little bit of improvements here and there. Today I'm joined by Sam Goldberg and Evan Basuda. And guys, how are you doing today? And uh, also, what the heck's going on with soccer? You know, I don't, I don't know. Uh, it, it's, really, it's really a big question that's going around right now. The men's, the men's program, they just can't seem to close out games or buy themselves a goal. And 
they really, they've really just been struggling uh, in general just to put some tallies on the board. What about you, Evan? I agree. I, I, they've been struggling to get the goals on the board. Yeah, cool. definitely, definitely a struggling teams right now. But maybe in the future there are some bright spots. Uh, Brian Acundo and uh, Haley Finale, some of the younger pieces on here. The Horizon League joined last year by the, uh, both these teams. Is there a chance that, say, three years from now, the men's or women's soccer team uh, can finish at the top of the Horizon League standings? We'll start with the men's team. Sam? So uh, you know how, uh, you know how uh, stores have that buy one, get one free uh, in stores? Well, right now, the men's team, they're that free item that I really don't want. I really don't feel like that they'll be able to capitalize on any chances or anything like that in, in the Horizon League in the coming years. I don't think they'll be at the top of the leaderboard in the Horizon League. I mean, Tom McAnola, I was really high on him coming into the program last year. Just got his first goal against Milwaukee. Uh, right now, the men's team, they're really missing that piece that can really score and put tallies up on the board. But right now, the win column, it's just really absent. That missing piece, though, could be argued that the women's have that. Uh, the women's team has that uh, with uh, Haley Finale, who is leading the team in goals. She scored today in an upsetting loss. Uh, nonetheless, she has four goals. Evan. Now that the women's team potentially has that, that new Jane Schleicher, that new you know, core piece to build around, do you think they could potentially win the Horizon League in, say, three years? Well, Goldberg brought up leaving that item on the shelf. I'm going to pick it up for the women's soccer. I think they definitely have a shot in the next three years. Haley Finale, that rising star, she already has 14 points on the year, four of them goals. She's going to lead the charge. Emily Rocco there with two goals as well. If they can get the supporting cast going, I think they have a great shot at winning. And a really important piece as well for the RMU Colonials women's team as well. You have uh, Kayla Veluso Lima as well. She's a big piece that's not listed on that on that uh, chart right there. She's a she's a junior at the current moment, and she's a big piece as well. She scored two goals in that three game win streak that the Colonials had as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, we're, we're you know trying to build a, a young core here, at, at least for RMU soccer. Um, let's focus on the men's team. Uh, perhaps their best player so far has been Brian Akumo, who has you know led the team in points so far. Sam, do you think he continues to lead the team in points uh, towards the end of the season and finishes as the Colonials' top uh, goal scorer and point scorer by the end of the season? So I'm actually going to sell that idea. Uh, I'm really high on Tom McAnola this year. I know he buried his first goal this year in two years, in, or excuse me, one in, we'll say one and a half years that he's been with the program so far. Uh, I really feel like Tom McAnola will, find, will finally find his groove and start putting tallies up on the board, and he will become that number one goal scorer that the Colonials need. Evan? Yes, I, I think there's a good shot. Um, it's pretty even in the standings right now. Each of them has one goal, but I think Okongo has a good chance at staying up at the top. All right, we'll flip that question to the women's side. Do you guys think the current uh, point leader, uh, Haley Finale, for the women's team continues to be the leading point scorer uh, and finishes the season at the top of the, the leaderboards for the Colonials in points? I'm going to absolutely buy that idea from you right there, Owen. Uh, I absolutely love uh, what... Uh, Finale has been doing so far this season. She's been that piece that the men's team is missing, meaning that the women's have found the women's team have found that piece that they need to get goals on the board or flow the ball through the middle of the field, and and it's shown. There, the team looks a lot better than compared to last year, and I feel like I feel like Finale will be will be in a commanding lead in points by the end of the by the end of the season for the Colonials. Evan, do you agree? I, I agree. I think. The chance that Gabby Lacuna and Emily Rocco could catch her is there, but I, like I said, Haley Finale is that rising star that the Colonials have needed for a while, and I don't think anyone's catching her. Yeah, scoring depth has been absent for both of these teams, uh, just like Tyler Gallo on tonight's show, uh, very absent. Also, scoring absent-wise has been the, the football team. They were blanked in last, week con last week's uh, contest. Um, Colonial Sports Network sat down with uh, head coach Bernard Clark. We have that interview right after the break. Bring it.
Time out, guys. I'm late to dinner. My mom's gonna kill me. Catch you guys later. Mom wants us home. Okay. Bye, guys. You guys need a ride? Sure. Oh, yeah. All right. How about some one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, I gotta go eat, man. Sorry, I'll, I'll see you later. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. It's been 671 days since the Robert Morris football team took their home field at Joe Walton Stadium. They will take on the Howard Bison in a huge matchup for their first game since 2019 at home. It not only will be a big day on the field, but also in remembrance off the field, as they will honor the late Joe Walton. Walton was a fixture in the, the Western Pennsylvania community. He spent 19 seasons as a head coach of Robert Morris football. He helped build the program from scratch, hiring coaches, uh, recruiting players, and buying equipment. Current head coach Bernard Clark spoke on what it is going to be like remembering him and the atmosphere coming into this game for their first game at home since 2019. That I admire about Coach Walden, and when we were on that call and smoking the test of this, the one thing that I learned because I played at University of Miami while I was there, I was I was lucky enough to win two national championships. The one thing I learned is the attitude's always the same on championship teams. The players run the team. The players understand the importance. The players hold each other accountable, and that's what Coach Walden did here. He had these players understand that this is your team. You have to hold each other accountable. You're the ones that are going to win football games. All we're doing is putting you into place. And when I got here and I heard those guys talking about some of the stuff Coach Walton did with them, it was exactly what Coach Johnson did with us when I was there, helping us understand that this is a player's game. That's what this is. This is a player's game. You have to run it. You have to be accountable to each other. And I thank Coach Walton for helping me understand that even more, getting around a team that won six conference championships. Uh, the thing that we prepare them for is just know that, hey, we're going to take it play by play and we're going to try to win the football game. We're not going to try to put a big picture out there. Hey, let's go play by play. Be smart about what's going on. Take a down after down and understand it's one play after another. Don't let the atmosphere get bigger than what it is. Understand the fans are back. I know you're excited, but don't let that overwhelm what we come to do. It's always a business trip. Even when you're going on an away game, we got to remind our guys, this is a business trip. This is all about winning a football game and getting on to the next one and making sure you know what's going on. But we've got to take it play by play. As the Colonials look for their first one of the season, I'm joined by football analyst Michael Deemer, who broke down last week, or two, or last week, or the loss to Central Michigan, 45 0. This week, we're going to take a look ahead at what Howard has to offer. Now, Michael, you have three keys for us. Let's, let's hear your first one. Yeah, the first one is Howard has played three games three games this season, RMU has played one. However, Howard has struggled in all three of them. They have, they have allowed 300 passing yards in all the games that they have played. So they need to have a vertical attack. They need to throw the ball more and expose the secondary and, corn, and defensive backs for the Howard Bison. Yeah, George Martin, only eight passing attempts through the air against Central Michigan. That's a huge key for them. What's your second key of the game? We'll get Elijah Jackson going early. He missed last game against Central Michigan two weeks ago and uh, yeah and he's just waiting to get on the field playing at home for the first time since 2019 and uh, I would assume he's really excited uh, the entire team's excited for him to be back and uh, I expect him to be uh, what's, the, uh, what's the word a driving force early in this game. Yeah Michael the Howard Bison letting up 49 points per game in this one offense looking to get going in this one. What's your third key for the game? Yeah, well, a hot cup of Joe is what I like. Is what I like to say. They're obviously, as I just said, playing at Joe Walton Stadium for the first time since 2019. I'd say f feed off the crowd early, and it would obviously put Howard in a very uncomfortable position going into this game. Yeah, a huge matchup between the Colonials and the Howard Bison, looking 
for Robert Morris to get their first win on the season. But coming, after, coming up after break, we're going to go to the hardwood as the volleyball team closed up their, uh, their travels to the Mountaineer Invitational and the men's and women's basketball team dropped their schedules on us. Stay here at, on Colonial Sports Center. Oh, Scott. Hey. I'm heading out, man. You want to ride? No, I got my car, but I actually really need to go to the bathroom. Oh, you know what? I was just in there. The line is like 10 people long. You know, I think I'll just... Dude, are you okay? You wouldn't believe what I was just thinking. I, I am definitely buzzed. Yeah. I think I will take this, and I will take that ride home. Smart man. Did you see how that dog was looking at me? Welcome back. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. The volleyball team continued their, their clash at the Mountaineer Invitational as they woke up in the morning to take on Penn State Volleyball. Let's see how they fared on the 11 a.m. tip for them. And the Colonials would fall 3-0 to the Nittany Lions. This was their first time meeting up in 12 years between the Nittany Lions and the Colonials. Last time they faced off against each other, the same result, 3-0. Emma Granger led for the Colonials, four kills, eight points, also five blocks. Abby Ryan also added five digs, four and a half points for her. On the Penn State, Penn State side of things, Allie Holland, 11 kills, 15 points for Penn State, and Adana Rollins, six digs, 13 points. And last week, my player to watch, Caitlin Hoard, figured in with six and a half points and five kills. While the Colonials lost their first two games in the Mountaineer Invitational, they look to close it out with a win. Let's see how they did in that game. And they would win 3-0 against another set of Colonials. And George Washington, Army with a clean sweep in this matchup, their first ever meeting against the Colonials from George Washington. Emma Granger, once again, eight aces, 14 points in this contest, five kills. Allison Londot, seven kills, seven and a half points. And then for George Washington, Salim Yohannes, four kills, four and a half points. And Lauren Labeck, 13 assists, two and a half points in this matchup. They did not have a player with over five points in the contest. And the Colonials for the volleyball team will now set embark on an 18-game straight game streak against Horizon League match, Horizon League foes. Speaking of the Horizon League, the men's and women's basketball team released their schedule this past week. Ethan and Colby are going to discuss it now. That's right, Nate. We're hitting the hardwood here on Colonial Sports Center as the basketball beat writer for Colonial Sports Network, Ethan Morrison, is joining me. Ethan, how you doing? I'm doing very well, Colby. Basketball is quickly approaching with the schedules being released last week. I can't wait to get it going. Now, when you first saw the men's schedule, what were you thinking about? I mean, every year it seems like Andy Tool is building uh, an amazing schedule. I mean, you see what's going on. The first three games, huge games, starting off the season November 10th at UCF. Then you got Kentucky, Ohio, and Mount St. Mary's. That's in the Kentucky Invitational. So that's going to be a good game. All of those games are going to be great to start off the year. Then right after that, you got Davidson, and then you get into conference play a little bit. Then you got Lancaster Bible School, a non Division I opponent. Then you got Florida Gulf Coast as well, Bowling Green, and St. Francis, Pennsylvania, another team. That from the NEC Conference, the Northeast Conference, so that's going to be another great game as well. And then just sprinkled in throughout the conference play, there's a lot of great matchups. You got Cleveland State as well. Um, Baldwin's going to be in the bird, Patrick Baldwin Jr. Jr. on January 27th, which I'll get into later. And, you know, just a full slate of games for them. Can't be more excited for the season to begin. Now, you're, you were going through schedule. We're talking about that right now. Can you give me your top five games 
for the men's schedule. Yeah, I can, Colby. So starting off at number five, uh, it would have to be Green Bay. It's their Horizon League opener, Colby. So, I mean, it's the first time they're going to be playing Green Bay in Horizon League competition. Of course, last year was shortened due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and then coming in at number four, Cleveland State, Robert Morris hosts the Vikings on January 7th. Um, they are the defending Horizon League champions. They made it to the tournament last season. At number three, they're traveling to Davidson, North Carolina. It's the first time they are facing the Wildcats in program history. Number two, as I said before, Baldwin will be in the Berg. Patrick Baldwin Jr. was the number four overall recruit in the 2021 high school recruiting class. They played two close games against Milwaukee last year, lost a tight one in regulation, and then in their second game of the season series, they lost one in overtime. And, you know, one guy's not going to change the whole, the whole team, Colby. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, number one, can't get better than this. Andy Toole, John Calipari, three. The third game against these two schools, Kentucky, Robert Morris, can't get any better than that. Traveling to Rupp Arena again, they beat Kentucky in the chuck um, in 2013, 59 to 57, that crazy game. And then they lost in Rupp Arena um, a couple months later in the 2013-2014 regular season. So it's going to be a nice trilogy, a great way to end, uh, to you know, start off the year. Now let's switch gears to the women's schedule. Uh, any let's let's look at your top five, or actually let's take a look at the women's schedule for a bit, and then we'll go to your top five. Yeah, you know, Colby, there's there's a lot of good games on there. You got, you know, the St. Bonaventure playing a home and home series, um, which you don't really see a lot in college basketball, like completing that home and home series during the year. So that was an interesting sight to see as well. I mean, you also got Akron coming to town for the home opener as well. Um, also, I mean conference games early just like you saw in the men's schedule as well against Detroit Mercy and Oakland um, and then you got Wright State coming to town um, as well so I mean a lot of great games on the schedule a young team a young team I mean a lot of freshmen on this team a lot to prove got some nice returning players as well so it's going to be, going to be very interesting now quickly give me your top five games for the women's top schedule. five Colby St. Bonaventure obviously the home and home series is going to be huge for them and then also you got Detroit Mercy on the road. That will be the Horizon League home opener for them. Also Miami going down to Florida, South Beach. Going to be a great game there. Obviously the home opener uh, for the season for the Colonials against Akron on November 13th. And then IUPUI who lost in the uh, Horizon League tournament uh, championship game uh, coming in at number one on January 14th. Now, Ethan, thank you for joining me today to discuss uh, Robert Morris basketball. But if you are interested in Robert Morris basketball or Robert Morris sports in general, Colonial Sports Network has you covered. The writers over there have you have you covered for all our new sports while the football team kicks off their season, soccer teams looking to bounce back, and the basketball team. Make sure to check out CSN. And coming up after the break, we got some lacrosse news for you here at Colonial Sports Center. Strangers, you told me not to cross the street without looking both ways. You told me not to touch the stove. You told me not to do drugs. You told me not to drink and drive. You gave me so many messages about how to stay safe. Why didn't you keep me safe by properly storing your gun? When I was your age, I was just like you, fascinated by stars. <sighs> but now I get to search for life in the universe. And who knows, maybe life is looking for us too. So we're like aliens to them? Yeah. Does anyone want to be a scientist now? I do. Awesome, we need more girls in STEM. Maybe we can find aliens. Worried about your friend, but don't know how to reach out? You can say, how are you, or get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's all good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. Colby, great discussion with Ethan over there about the men's and women's basketball teams.
but there's some breaking news that came in this week on the men's lacrosse side of things. That's right. The men's lacrosse team has a new head coach for you. Let's check that out right here. And we have the quote from Craig McDonald. I'm extremely honored with this great opportunity and can't wait to meet with the current players and alumni and get to work. Now let's take a look at his stats, accolades as head coach. He was at UMass. Uh, Craig McDonald career highlights here. Former assistant coach of UMass since 2014 till 2021. He also coached at uh, Union College. Uh, Nate, what are you thinking about this hire? You know, Andrew McFinn was a was a great coach for the men's lacrosse team, but Craig McDonald is going to have to come in and take over a program that has been very successful on campus, and we'll see what he can do bringing his accolades over from UMass and help this men's lacrosse program. It's definitely going to be a very interesting, interesting few years for the lacrosse team. And now we're going to toss it into our exclusive look from last Friday's Army Colonial Invitational with Evan Basisto. I'm Evan Basista here with Colonial Sports Network at the RMU Colonial Invitational in Clinton, PA, as the RMU cross country team gets ready to face Carnegie Mellon, Pitt, Duquesne, IUP, and their Horizon League foes, Northern Kentucky and Youngstown State. This is the second straight competition that RMU was at least a partial host, making that the first time in program history that's happened. Assistant coach Billy Caldwell shared his thoughts on what that means for the program. No, hosting stuff, man, that's, that's a huge, huge honor, and, it, and it's something that I think will help our program tremendously. Um, you know, giving our, our athletes a, a place to, you know, race at home in front of the home crowd, in front of, front of fa family, friends, um, you know, faculty is huge. Um, it gets our program um, some, you know, some, some publicity and, and gets people excited about what we're doing. Um, our guys work really hard, our ladies work really, really hard, and um, I want that to be shown off to, to the program and, and to the school as a whole, because um, at the end of the day, we do represent RMU and, and, our, and our community around RMU. So, um, you know, it's, it's, a great, it's a great honor to be able to host something, and, you know, I think it's the start of a, a, a new program here at RMU. Top RMU men's runner, freshman Gavin Fitzgerald, shared his thoughts on how he thinks the home crowd has an impact. I mean, it helps so much. Uh, you just have everyone cheering for you. There's people here that you don't even know who they are sometimes, and they're saying RMU, Bobby Moe, and it's just great. It's great to have that home crowd and everything, and there's nothing more that you could ask for. This is the men's team's first year since 2013 after being reinstated. Fitzgerald spoke on being part of that new beginning. I mean, it feels great. It's definitely different. It's definitely difficult. You have 10 guys all relying on each other to do their best. Some people, I mean, you can see it every day. Some people don't have their days, but, you know, we're all out there fighting, struggling, doing it all together, and that's all you can ask for. It's like a brotherhood. It's everything that you want it to be, and it's just the most fun that we have. Coach Caldwell spoke on what his team can take from this experience going on throughout the rest of their season. You know, we're, we have a very, very young group. Um, on the men's side, we have uh, eight freshmen um, and two upperclassmen. Obviously, this is our first year racing men um, since 2013. So we have a very new group. Um, on the women's side, um, yeah, same thing. We have six freshmen um, and a couple upperclassmen. Um, and, and it's a lot of them. It's their first time running 6K and 8K. Um, so just getting some experience, one, racing against people within our conference, and, and two, racing that distance, um, it's, it's going to be beneficial for us here down the road as we kind of move into the late part of our season and eventually into the championship part of our season. The two teams will be back in action October 1st in Bethlehem, PA to take part in the Paul Short Run. From Colonial Sports Network, I'm Evan Basista. For the second straight year, it was a huge event for the cross country team to host the RMU Colonial Invitational. And Colby, as we've unfolded everything that has happened pa this past week, let's take a look ahead at our games to watch. Mm -hmm. For me, you have to go to Joe Walton Stadium for Saturday's matchup at 12 between the Colonials and the Howard Bison. Big matchup, their first home game in 671 days. My players to watch in this one, Jamar Shagog for the Colonials. 18 tackles his past, this past game against Central Michigan. Seven solo and that one sack. He's looking to build off that performance. And quarterback Quentin Williams will lead the charge for the, for the Bison coming into this one. Four touchdowns on the year, three interceptions. Last year he threw only six touchdowns for six interceptions as well. The Bison looking for their first win on the season. Definitely excited for that game and my first time to be in student section as there were no home games last year. But my game to watch is a little 
a little out there, but it's the D1 club hockey team as they have their first game against Canisius at 8 o'clock on Friday. Now, we don't have a regular hockey team because they've been disbanded, so it's important to go out and support this one. My players to watch are Zach Wagner and Roman Kramer. Well, Colby, I'm excited to see what the club hockey team can do. I'm also excited what the football team can do this Saturday. But it's been a, a wonderful night again on Thursday night for Colonial Sports Center. Thanks to everyone upstairs and down here on the floor. I'm Nathan Brisker, and for Colby Sherwin, thanks for watching Colonial Sports Center.